every religion has a mystical branch that tries to stay true to the original meaning of the words in the scriptures. Small group of individuals striving to understand what this all means to the individual. Use of parallel study, not being fixated on certain words, words that have lost all their meaning because of over glorification. The moment you hear a word that has been used again and again has been recognized as something special, otherworldly. There is no inquiry. Automatically, you see yourself as utterly incapable of understanding it. Hence, you just accept it. The word God. Every religion has this word. But it's not a word that picks your interest. Oh, I want to know what this thing is. I want to see if I can find this within me. The word is so heavy, so overloaded, so overburdened that it just sits there as a dead weight. There's nothing you can do about it. A few individuals, through their ability to see beyond words, the relationship that they have developed with themselves in silence, the conversation that they have been having in silence within themselves allows them to see beyond the veil of words. Now, when these individuals decide to interpret a familiar scripture, their interpretation takes everything back to the source so completely, so thoroughly that their interpretation becomes the foundation for a whole new different stream of understanding the scriptures. A new branch sprouts. It will be recognized as a new branch. In the world of Judaism, Kabbalah is one such branch. The starting point of that branch is a mystical interpretation of the Torah called the Zohar by Rabbi Shimon. Now his story is interesting. It is said that to escape Roman persecution, to escape religious persecution, he hid in a cave for 13 years. Of course, there are mystical overlays, but the story is very much believable. It is said that he survived on a miraculous stream that appeared in the cave and a carob tree 
that fed him. He stayed there for 13 years and then when the Roman king who was persecuting everybody had died, he comes out with a totally new, renewed understanding of the Torah and reinterprets it. This is how the story is remembered. In actuality, it is a very common mystical journey to withdraw from the world, whether you're running away from persecution or you simply want some quiet space for yourself. Mystical path asks for isolation. You're trying to discover something so special, so transcendental. It will come to redefine everything about you and the world. So you cannot be lost in the world while you're searching for this thing. The first requirement, the basic requirement is find some quiet place where you will not be disturbed. Again, what is this disturbance? What is the world for the one who is searching for the ultimate? It's his own mind that has overgrown. His garden is just filled with unwanted weeds. Now he's unable to sow the seed that he wants to sow. He's unable to sow the seed of truth. Now if he tries to clear out this garden, he'll be in trouble because these weeds can talk. These weeds have developed their own ways of staying alive. You cannot simply cut them out. The easier option is to find a fertile ground where the weeds have not yet taken over. Sometimes a barren land, nothing can grow there, a mountain cave or a mountain top or somewhere deep in the forest where civilization has not taken root. It's a harsh environment, but with little bit of work, you can turn it into something. There is a reason why there are no weeds there because it's not nourishing enough. People have all huddled together in certain places. If you look at most of human civilization, almost all the major cities of the world are on banks of rivers. This is not a coincidence because a river provides nutrition for the land and agriculture. There's abundance of resources in deserts, mountain tops, ocean. There's still vast amounts of open space just empty, available. Now, why do you want to battle with? your mind that has gone out of control. You can just find a quieter place. That place itself assists you in your understanding, in your journey. Most people do not understand how important this is how important, how much of a difference just moving from the place of conflict, from the place of disturbance, just that one moment of decision can save them years 
of trouble. But most people cannot do it because they are attached to their troubles. They are attached to the mind. It is tormenting them. But they have developed a relationship with this tormentor. Once in a while, an individual says, it doesn't matter. I'm going to find a quiet space for myself. Of all the rabbis who were teaching in the synagogues, teaching the same Torah, interpreting it in the same way, in a way that people had become accustomed to accustomed to hearing. This is what the Torah is for us. It is the word of God. It is the word of our ancestors. It is a way of bringing justice, removal of all conflict, an interpretation which is mostly social because that is what Jews had been searching for all their lives. They were not searching for enlightenment. They were not searching for Ein Sof, the infinite. For them, just deliver us from this persecution. Because we are not a military tribe. We are not interested in building kingdoms, creating militaries. We are not violent people. We are people of the word. We want to spend time contemplating on these words, understanding them, interpreting them. We just want a temple. And we want to hold, out, hold on to our simple rituals and customs. But the world around them has become something else altogether. Greed and ignorance has turned communities into military entities where the only way you can survive is by killing your neighbor. Now, Jews had not even thought about this way of life, the conflict between Jews and Romans. When Romans occupied Jerusalem, Jews had no self-defense. They had no military. They had not even thought about self-defense. For them, Everything is the book. They call themselves the people of the book. Romans were the people of the sword. Now, if there is a fight between the sword and the book, which will win? The sword will always win. So they were only searching for deliverance from this persecution. These monstrous entities that had just created themselves for just one purpose, control and rule. Naturally, the religious scriptures became a way of solving this problem. Because the idea of deliverance comes from the scriptures. The idea of freedom comes from the scriptures. Because ultimately, what is it that you are searching for? You are searching for peace. You are searching for freedom. You are searching for liberation from suffering, strife. In a mystical sense, this is quite literal. You have to understand the suffering of the mind. You have to understand the suffering of the body. You have to understand suffering as it is happening within you. But if there is so much suffering on the outside, so much conflict on the outside, without solving that first, how can you even come to the individual? Only when you have a stable ground on which to stand, you can look at the sky, you can look at the stars. If you cannot even stand firm in the land where you were born, where your ancestors were born, 
when you are being persecuted in your own homeland, where will you have time for quiet contemplation and reflection? This is why it has always been a struggle to realize the truth of who we are. The struggle is not existential. Silence and stillness are available in abundance. But we have created an environment of conflict on the outside. And we are so trapped in trying to resolve that conflict. Our scriptures have become political doctrines. Instead of them being mystical sources of liberation, they have just become a numbing balm for the masses.